Yes, hello once again and another uh, very warm welcome back to a brand new year here on Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV and uh, I do hope you've enjoyed everything that we brought you during 2023 because we're all ready uh, looking forward to showcasing uh, more of these old school uh, vintage dirt bikes here uh, on my channel. So we have lots of uh, projects in the pipeline uh, for this year so uh, I do hope uh, you'll either subscribe or continue uh, to return to my channel to take a look at all of the very nice machines that I'm going to bring you uh, during uh, 2024. But let's kick off this uh, brand new year with a look at a super rare uh, machine and uh, right now we're going to take a look at Terry Pickering's uh, 1980 uh, Frigerio Puch 250 Twin Shocker. Yes, another warm welcome back to the start uh, of a brand new year here on Classic Dirt Bike TV. And uh, up until I do eventually manage to get out and about uh, on my travels again, filming uh, more uh, vintage classics for my YouTube subscribers, we're going to uh, continue to uh, check out some more uh, vintage old school uh, bikes that have been taken uh, from my video archives. But the very first event I'll be attending in 2024 will be the fantastic uh, two-day Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show which will be coming up in the middle of uh, February so if you're uh, going along to that event then uh, maybe you can just uh, say hello if you're uh, passing by. Although we're going to start uh, the new year by uh, taking a look at this uh, super rare a unused uh, an unmolested example uh, of a 1980 uh, Frigerio Pooch uh, 250 and this is another uh, fine specimen that's been taken uh, from the vast uh, Terry Pickering uh, collection of vintage uh, dirt racers. Now you may remember uh, from the end of last year we uh, showed you uh, that other vintage time capsule of a bike that uh, Terry had in his collection which uh, was of course the 1980 Italian uh, Ancelotti 250. Well uh, this uh, featured uh, Frigerio Pooch uh, was actually bought from uh, the same collector in Belgium and uh, this is another uh, super rare bike that's uh, never uh, been raced or had a drop of fuel. Uh, placed in its tank since it was manufactured uh, more than uh, 44 uh, years ago. Now when you look at this bike it certainly seems uh, just too good uh, to be true that a 44 year old uh, classic dirt bike can look uh, this good especially uh, when it's never uh, undergone any uh, kind of refurbishment or restoration uh, of any kind but uh, just like uh, that 1980 uh, Ancelotti that we featured recently. Uh, this is uh, again without doubt uh, the real deal uh, from that year with all of its original parts uh, that have yet uh, to be baptised by any grass, mud or any other earth related motocross uh, substances. And when you look at the condition of all of the plastics and the painted surfaces it's quite hard to imagine that this bike here it was put together uh, all those uh, years ago. So uh, as with uh, the Ancelotti that we featured from Terry's collection, this uh, Pooch or uh, Pooch if you pronounce it that way, uh, 250, it was one of five uh, unmolested and unused uh, and even unstarted original uh, 1980 machines that Terry bought uh, from a private collector in Belgium uh, who uh, I was told uh, had a full uh, warehouse of these kind of motorcycle timepieces all of which were in immaculate original uh, condition and all of course were unused from their day of uh, manufacture. But as you know uh, Pooch uh, motorcycles had been uh, making smaller capacity commuter road bikes for many years and uh, I can certainly remember their uh, little uh, Pooch uh, Maxi 50cc mopeds that they produced in the 1970s, a machine that sold in their absolute thousands and 
uh, were uh, mega popular with us uh, kind of teenagers uh, of that day because uh, they were quick and reliable transport uh, for a young, uh, vibrant male uh, just to be able to uh, get around on. Although uh, some years later, I did hear that, uh, I think it was around 1987, that Pooch uh, was then sold uh, to Piaggio, the manufacturer uh, of the famous uh, Vespa scooter. And of course, uh, Pooch uh, were another one of the big uh, European uh, manufacturers of uh, not only bikes, but they uh, did make uh, small cars and uh, other vehicles as, as well at one time. And uh, their history uh, dates way back to the early uh, 1900s when uh, the company's then founder, uh, industrialist uh, Johann uh, Pooch, uh, first uh, started the firm in uh, Graz in uh, Austria. Although uh, getting back here to our featured bike, which uh, as I mentioned, is an original and unused uh, machine from that year that it uh, has an uh, Austrian uh, Pooch uh, built tubular steel uh, chassis and of course uh, an Austrian made uh, Rotax uh, two stroke motor uh, as well. Now, the Frigerio uh, part of this bike's title uh, were, again, uh, another one of the small Italian-based uh, companies founded in 1977 by uh, Luigi Frigerio, who uh, were initially uh, commissioned uh, by Pooch uh, years ago to build uh, a lightweight off-road uh, motorcycle that uh, started off by using uh, a Pooch engine, but uh, these were later uh, changed for Austrian uh, Rotax uh, power plants. But Fregerio did certainly build uh, some superb examples of these uh, motocrossers during the 1970s and uh, 1980s. So as we begin uh, with the bike's uh, chassis, which uh, was constructed of uh, light gauge tubular steel, and uh, this frame here was perfectly suited to this light uh, Rotax uh, two-stroke uh, motor. And more or less, all of these uh, Fregerio uh, racer frames uh, were uh, all painted in this orange uh, type of colour scheme, which, uh, as you can see, was uh, quite radical and maybe uh, slightly over the top. But uh, then again, this is an Italian uh, motorcycle, so it would have to have uh, some kind of style and elegance about it, as, of course, uh, most Italian uh, manufactured motorcycles do. Although when you look at uh, the condition of some of the other parts that uh, are bolted onto this frame, even after 44 years, there's uh, still uh, very little signs of corrosion or uh, furring of their surfaces and they look just as fresh as the day uh, they were made. And even uh, other parts like this uh, steel swing arm uh, look like brand new with uh, absolutely no scratches, abrasions or uh, damage whatsoever. And uh, that paintwork is still uh, vibrant and uh, very fresh. Now, of course, uh, Pooch uh, didn't really have their own engine that they could fit into their 250 chassis and the power plant uh, for our bike uh, was supplied uh, by Rotax, which is an Austrian uh, manufactured uh, motor. And this engine here is a 250 two-stroke, which, uh, as I remember, I think had a five-speed uh, close ratio gearbox and uh, a quite unique uh, rotary uh, disc valve induction uh, system. But this engine uh, was used on many different makes and models of off-road bikes, and it was also uh, the motor that powered uh, many of the uh, Bombardier Can-Am uh, motorcycles of the 1980s, although in terms of their popularity, power and reliability, then these uh, two-stroke Rotax motors were without doubt as good, if not better, than any of the equivalent uh, Japanese 250 two-strokes of their time. But getting back uh, to this rotary disc valve induction system, which uh, basically consisted of a fibre uh, rotating disc that was fixed 
onto this uh, left hand side of the crankshaft and when uh, the disc rotated uh, past a little opening in the side of the crankcase then suction uh, was created and the fuel air mixture was then uh, sucked into the cylinder and uh, the fuel in our case here uh, was supplied uh, through this uh, big Bing uh, 84 uh, carburetor which uh, again was a very uh, popular choice to fit uh, onto these Rotax engines uh, back in the 1980s. Although you can see that uh, these uh, Rotax engines had quite a big surface area uh, with the cylinder head and uh, the barrel which uh, was all really just to help uh, the cooling of the motor and uh, the larger fins on the barrel and head uh, did uh, help uh, dissipate heat that uh, little uh, bit better. But to provide uh, all of the sparks uh, for our uh, 250 Rotax engine, it was a Bosch uh, CDI electronic ignition system that was fitted here uh, onto this uh, right hand side uh, of the engine. And the crankcases on these uh, engines, of course, were made of exotic magnesium, which, uh, although it was a few grams lighter than traditional alloy, uh, these magnesium casings uh, were much more expensive uh, to produce than their more common uh, alloy uh, counterparts. But uh, moving uh, right along onto the bike's exhaust expansion chamber, which, as you can see, is still in fantastic condition after uh, more than 44 years uh, on the planet. Although, uh, I suppose when you consider that this pipe here hasn't even uh, seen a sniff of a motocross track uh, during its lifetime, it's not really surprising that it's still as good as the day it was made and uh, it's still uh, sporting its original paint and uh, patina from uh, 1980. And uh, once more, the exhaust uh, rear tailpipe, as you can see, is uh, more or less free from any carbon uh, deposits, mainly uh, because uh, this uh, Rotax engine's uh, never really been run in anger, so uh, you'd expect this pipe uh, still to be factory fresh, as is, of course, uh, the rest of the components on this uh, very rare uh, motorcycle. Now, because this is an Italian-based motocrosser, you'd certainly expect uh, the bike to have a few Italian-made uh, parts bolted onto it, and these uh, top and bottom triple clamps, or yokes, are all part of the bike's Italian uh, Marzocchi uh, front uh, suspension system. Now, Marzocchi were uh, supplying their motorcycle suspensions to all manner of bike manufacturers during the late 1970s and early 80s, and uh, Frigerio were uh, just another one of the many customers who fitted uh, these Marzocchi forks uh, to their machines. But for their time, uh, these suspensions were pretty good units, which is why they were so popular with uh, many riders and manufacturers uh, of uh, that period. And as we move on uh, to the bike's uh, front hub, now exactly what uh, make and model of hubs are fitted onto the front and the back of our uh, 250, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, for 1980, uh, these bikes uh, were still using uh, these old school uh, drum stoppers uh, here on the front and uh, at the back. And it's said that uh, although uh, these were uh, vintage uh, braking systems, they were still uh, quite adequate uh, to slow or stop our 250 when it was in full flight. And again, uh, this uh, rear brake also uh, was a pretty decent stopper because uh, this 250 uh, two-stroke uh, wasn't exactly a very heavy machine, so it was relatively easy uh, to stop it or uh, slow it down. Now, the back plate that's fitted uh, onto this bike uh, is a custom-made uh, Frigerio part uh, manufactured uh, by Frigerio uh, themselves. So, uh, again, 
a few more Italian parts on our Austrian based machine. So as we get to the front and the rear wheels on our uh, Pooch 250, these are still uh, the original uh, Norwegian manufactured Nordisk alloy rims, which uh, as you can see are still as fresh as the day uh, that they were made. And even the spokes on both of these wheels aren't even showing any signs of uh, dulling or uh, farting. And these could uh, quite easily be mistaken for a set of rims that were built just a few days ago. But at the front of the bike, as you recall, we had Italian Marzocchi forks and here at the rear, some more Italian influenced suspension systems with these Corti Corso remote reservoir rear shocks. Now these Corti Corsos uh, weren't exactly uh, top of the range as far as motocross shocks are concerned, but uh, this was still uh, a relatively light machine, so uh, these Corso units uh, probably uh, would have been uh, up to the job. But the remote uh, reservoirs uh, were fixed uh, onto the outside of the frame, which uh, was basically all done just to keep them in the flow of air uh, around the bike, just to try and help uh, keep uh, them cool when uh, they were being uh, worked hard. But I suppose uh, for their time in 1980 in particular, uh, these uh, Corti Corso units uh, may have been looked upon as uh, state of the art for that period, although uh, to be uh, pretty blunt here, uh, these shocks uh, weren't uh, that good. But uh, one of the more puzzling parts uh, on this bike, and it's something that I've uh, never personally come across before or even uh, heard of, is this uh, logo that was stamped on the bike's uh, side panel, which is titled the uh, Dreschreiber system. Now, uh, whether this is anything to do with the bike's uh, rear suspension or uh, maybe uh, another part of the bike's function, I don't exactly know, but maybe some of my uh, more knowledgeable YouTubers out there could enlighten us all as to its uh, particular function. And uh, once again, and uh, as with most off-road bikes of that period, uh, it was a plastic uh, fuel tank that was fitted onto R250 that housed uh, the premix gas to feed that two-stroke uh, Rotax motor, but I think it was around uh, the late 1970s or early 80s when uh, most manufacturers were beginning to ditch their old steel and alloy fuel tanks for these much more uh, durable, lighter and uh, less expensive to produce uh, plastic items, which of course uh, could be manufactured in just about any colour and any shape that the motorcycle bike manufacturers uh, required. Which brings us on quite nicely to the bike's uh, seat, which uh, again uh, bears uh, the Frigerio and uh, Pooch logos. And you can see almost straight away that uh, it certainly looks uh, brand new, which of course is uh, no surprise considering that this bike's uh, never really had a rider uh, swing his leg over it in the last uh, 40 odd years. But once again, it's very well made and it certainly looks comfortable enough with uh, plenty padding and uh, long enough for the rider to shift his weight uh, from the front onto the back of the bike whenever uh, it was required. Now, all of the bike's uh, plastic parts are of course uh, the original items that were fitted at the factory back in 1980 and these again as you can see have lasted uh, quite well with uh, no signs of discoloration or uh, fading after all uh, those years in storage and of course it was a service who originally supplied uh, the front and the rear mudguards uh, for these 250s and uh, more than likely uh, many of the other uh, plastic parts as well including uh, those uh, two side uh, panels and this uh, front number plate again uh, which incorporated the slot 
to hold that front brake cable in place is more than likely another Acerbis uh, unit. And so as we move on uh, to the cockpit part of our Italian uh, stallion, uh, the bike uh, is still sporting uh, all of its original uh, 1980 components, although if there was ever one slight flaw in this immaculate machine, it would be these uh, handlebar grips, which uh, seem to be showing uh, signs of their age by uh, cracking and uh, general uh, deterioration. But that gasser and uh, all of the control cables are thankfully uh, all uh, still intact. But you can also see that these uh, alloy uh, Magura levers and of course uh, their leather covers there as well all uh, seem to have survived uh, slightly better than those uh, handlebar uh, grips. But these uh, covers uh, certainly do a very good job of uh, keeping things like dirt and moisture and other foreign bodies uh, from entering uh, the lever pivots and uh, those uh, cable ends. But again, uh, these parts are quite rare to find on such an old uh, twin shocker and uh, they are without doubt a, a valuable accessory to have fitted uh, onto this bike. Although at the end uh, of the day, this is uh, yet another uh, super rare original 1980s uh, twin shock classic from uh, Terry Pickering's Aladdin's Cave of old school uh, classics. And in fact, we were quite lucky uh, to actually capture these pictures and clips of this bike on the day as we were uh, right in the middle uh, of a winter storm whilst uh, we were filming uh, these clips, but we still it managed to get the pictures that we needed uh, between uh, the showers. But uh, as I mentioned at the start of this video, this uh, bike here was just one of five brand new unused uh, machines that Terry bought uh, from that private collector in Belgium. And the other uh, four uh, machines that Terry uh, purchased uh, from that vendor uh, were this uh, fantastic 1981 Italian uh, Moto Vila uh, 250 MX1 and uh, this uh, superb looking uh, 1981 uh, TGM uh, 125 uh, Monoshock bike and uh, along with a 1980 Aprilia uh, 125 uh, Twin Shocker as well. And of course, uh, not forgetting the 1980 250 Ancelotti that we just featured recently on CDB TV. But Terry purchased all five of these bikes in one fell swoop, but naturally he never disclosed what he actually paid for them. But certainly a nice rare bike there to kick us off on our brand new year here on Classic Dirt Bike. Uh, TV and this is just a sample of the very high quality vintage classics that we'll be showcasing uh, throughout 2024 because as I mentioned earlier we already have some nice uh, projects lined up uh, for the coming uh, season starting of course with uh, the two-day classic uh, dirt bike show uh, coming up in the middle of February so uh, make sure that you tune in uh, to see all of those vintage classics from that event uh, to be held at the Telford International uh, Centre. So there you go, that's our first machine in the bag for this year. That's uh, Terry Pickering's 1980 Italian Frigerio Pooch 250. Now coming up in my next video posting of 2024, we're going to check out this uh, British made uh, classic and this bike here is uh, Tom Lewis's uh, 1965 uh, 350 Rickman Matisse uh, BSA, a proper old school uh, vintage uh, scrambler. So uh, make sure that you retune to take a look at this uh, very fine example. So until the next time, thanks once again for tuning in to Classic Dirt Bike TV.